the blind, blind man got, got healed. Uh, Jesus healed him. Uh, and the blind, the blind guy uh, went into the temple and dealt with the Pharisees and Sadducees. And he said, Who healed you? Uh, he said, Well, if I tell you, will you believe? You know, uh, you got to put it on the smart one. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And so they left off talking to the boy, and they turned to the parents. And because they were fearful of saying Jesus healed them, uh, they said, well, he made you ask him. Uh, why? Because it says that they didn't want to be kicked out of the town. Amen. Uh, it's everything. It's everything. Living with God, walking with God, is everything. Uh, do we believe that tonight? It's everything. Hallelujah. I see my Paul said, in him we live. In him we move and have our being. Amen. Uh, do we believe that tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So as we look at the scriptures and the events that happened after Jesus' resurrection, let's look at one, one, one side of the story. Luke chapter 24 and verse 13. We're going to ask our reader to read. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, mm -hmm. which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. All right. So, so Jesus' disciples, uh, they, they were on the road uh, to Emmaus. Uh, which was a little ways from, from Jerusalem, where all the events happened to Christ, where he was killed, crucified, died, where he rose again. All right, read. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. Uh, so they were, they were reminiscing about the events that had happened to Christ. Uh, and, and at this time, uh, Mary Magdalene had already came to the disciples. She was the first evangelist. She saw the, the resurrected Christ. And Jesus told her to go back to the disciples and tell them that I have risen. He also told them, uh, I'll go to Galilee. Uh, I'll meet with you there and give you further instructions on what you should do. Uh, and and by this time, also Peter and John had already ran to the temple, uh, to the tomb, and saw the tomb open. Uh, the stone rolled away. The angels spoke to Mary Magdalene uh, and, and, and told her, Why see ye the living among the dead? Uh, this Jesus who you see, he is already risen. Amen? Thank you, Lord. All right? Read. They, these are the things that they were talking about. Uh, and no doubt, uh, they put Judas in the mix, uh, that, that traitor, uh, how, what he did, he betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Uh, no doubt, they talked about how Peter cut off the man's ear. Uh, he said, did you see the Lord, how he put that ear back on that man uh, and healed him? Uh, no doubt, they were talking about how now, Pilate wanted to let go, set him free. You see how they wanted that, that murderer, Barabbas? Uh, and they didn't even take our Lord and say, uh, the, the nerve of those people. Uh, no doubt they were talking like that. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, my God, rehearsing all the events. My Lord. All right, read. Luke 24, 15. Uh-huh. And it came to pass. That while they communed together and reasoned, uh -huh. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Now notice, what were they doing here that was so important? Communing together. Communing together. Reasoning together. Uh, they were on one accord. And then because they were on one accord, what happened? Jesus came with them. Jesus appeared. Amen. When we are on one accord, uh, the Lord will show up. Do we believe that? Amen. So is it important for us to be on one accord? Amen. Uh, amen. It's important for us. 
to be on my court. Uh, where two or three are gathered together in his name, he said, What? He'll be in the midst. Amen? He'll be in the midst. We want Jesus in the midst. Don't we? Uh, so as they were communing together, talking about him and the events that had occurred to him, Jesus showed up. Uh, when you talk about Jesus, he'll show up. Amen? All right, thank you, Lord. All right, number 16. Uh, read Luke chapter 24 and verse 16. Read. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. All right, so at this particular time, because Christ had a purpose, uh, he didn't reveal himself to them. Amen? He didn't reveal himself to them. All right, read. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? My Lord, now, that gives us further insight. Uh, these people were sad. Uh, they were despondent. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And so Jesus, he said, what communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? No doubt, they were thinking of the, the, the hardship, the things that Jesus went through. Also, they were, they were thinking about, as we will get into this lesson, about the disappointment uh, that they had, yeah. the bewilderment that they had. Yeah. They, they put their life uh, on the line for believing in Jesus being the Christ. Amen. They themselves were in danger of being put to death. And they, they put all their confidence in him, and now he's dead. Uh, he's gone. So no doubt they were, they were disappointed because uh, we believe him to be the Messiah. Uh, and we believe him to be the Christ. And that, and that the way he died, this ought not to be. Uh, he ought not to die like that. Uh, we were trusting in him. So, so their perception of, of the events, it caused them to be sad, uh, despondent, which, which if Christ didn't intervene, they could have went a whole other direction. Uh, we need Jesus uh, to intervene in our lives. To help us, to encourage us. Amen. 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 All right. So where we at? Luke 24, 18. Uh, Luke 24, 18. All right. Read. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? Uh, don't you know the talk of the town? Are you a stranger? No, they don't think you're talking to Jesus. They think you're talking to somebody else. So aren't you a stranger in Jerusalem and have not known the things uh, which are coming to pass in these days? All right, read. And he said unto them, what thing? What thing? Jesus is, 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 is I'm going to say it this way. Jesus is setting them up for a teaching moment. <laughs> Amen. So he said, he said unto them, what then? Read. And they said unto him, uh -huh. concerning Jesus of Nazareth, yeah. which was a prophet, uh -huh. mighty indeed, in word, before God and all the people. My Lord, so we're talking about Jesus. Uh, we're talking about Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet. Uh, I said, yeah, he was a prophet. Yes. Uh, which was a prophet, uh, mighty, in word, in deed, and in word. Before God and all the people. Amen. They believed in Jesus. Amen. Amen. But they, they, were very, uh, they were shaken to the core. They were shaken to the very foundation. Amen. Uh, sometimes some things can come upon you that will shake you. Uh, shake you to the core. If it has to keep on living. Uh, thank you. All right. Read. 20. Yeah. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death. Uh -huh. And have crucified him. And have crucified him. They put him to death. The 
chief priests and the rulers, they delivered him. Who did they deliver him to? Who, who, who did the real rulers, the chief priests and the rulers, deliver Jesus to? The Romans. The Romans. Yeah. Pilate. Amen. Delivered him to him. Amen. Thank you. According to the scripture, did that so that he would be what?
to destroy us. Amen. But no, Jesus said, but I pray for you. Huh? That, that in your test, in, 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 in what the enemy is trying to bring up against you, that your faith will not fail. Huh? That you would hold your faith. Faith in God.
good talk. Yes. 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 Man, you got to think. Am I right? Yeah. Thank you. So Jesus did. What are we at? What verse did you have? That was 21 that I read. Where? Where are we at? Still alive. Amen. We 
that. And, and, and those that trust in Jesus, the word of God says that you will never be ashamed. Yes, Lord. Huh? No matter what. No matter what. What you experience, what you go through, as long as you have your trust and confidence in Him, uh, nothing shall destroy you, nothing shall overcome you, and He shall not be ashamed. Do we believe that? Nobody can get you out of hand. If you follow and obey, here we go. Trust and obey. Uh, there's no other way. Amen. Nothing uh, shall overtake you. Nothing shall be able to destroy you. No gossip, uh, no bill collector, no devil, no demon, no lie. Amen. Do we believe that? Amen. Um, wow, because the word says, thanks be to God uh, that gives us the victory through who? Amen. Thank you. My God. My God. All right, we're going to have to work here. 26. All right, 3.29. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. All right, now, he said that, don't you believe the word which you have read? Uh, we've got to believe uh, what, what, what the Lord or what the scriptures have said. Amen? In fact, John says uh, in his epistle toward the end, he says, all these things happen and were written so that you can believe. Amen? And in believing so that you can be saved. Yes. Amen? Yes. We got to believe God's word. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who can stop the word of God? It's quick, it's powerful, it's sharp in the two edged sword. Here's the thing with the body of the sucker, of soul, and spirit. Why is the word given? It's given for reproof, for correction, for instruction. Uh, uh, so that the man, the woman of God, can be thoroughly furnished. That, that thoroughly furnished means uh, thoroughly prepared. Amen? The word prepares you. The word builds you up. Amen? Uh, that's why Jesus asked him about, about believing in the scriptures. Yeah. Uh, and then verse 26, what does it say? Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? Now this is Papa, uh, the one whom you said over the night, ought not he have suffered these things? And then he told him, he taught him. He said, it behoove Christ to suffer. Yeah. Uh, never behoove me. It was necessary. It was expedient. Uh, it was unavoidable uh, for Christ to suffer. When did Jesus roll his hand up and say, oh, I'm not suffering anymore. I'm done. I'm out of here. Uh, we know.
Amen? And prepare ourselves. Amen? Uh, James, what did he say? Count it all. Get on the phone. 
Now, I'm going to add another layer to that. Right? Our life is to mirror his life. Yes. Am I right? Yes. It's not like to mirror his life. Yes. So in order for our life to and mirror his life, then we want to so life. Uh, not to the extent of his suffering, but we're going to go through some things. That's why we, God has given us the Holy Spirit. Oh, 
So Jesus took to the scriptures. Am I right? Sometimes. 
There's no lie in him. Am I right? Uh, so you got to review wicked thoughts that come in your mind yeah. and when you read the scripture. Am I right? Does any wicked thoughts come in your mind when you read the scripture? <laughs> you got to review it. Am I right? He said if your enemy compels you to go one mile, go two miles. Two. That's so right. what that meant. And he was willing to go that extra mile. Yeah.
Peace be unto you. Shalom. Peace be unto you. They were afraid, fearful. Jesus gave them peace. Amen. Read. But they were terrified and affrighted, <laughs> and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Wow. They still didn't believe that they had seen the spirit of God. Read. What verse 38. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? Mm. And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Mm. Behold my hands and my feet. Behold, check me out. My hands and my feet. That it is I myself. Yeah. Handle me. Handle me. And see. See. For a spirit hath not flesh and blood and bone, uh -huh. as ye see me have. I'm not given proof in heaven. Read. And when he had thus spoken, yeah. he showed them his hands and his feet. Mm. And while they yet believed not, not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? Further, further give them uh, evidence of uh, uh, his feet. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish uh -huh. and of a honeycomb. Yeah. And he took it and did eat before them. Mm. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spoke unto you, which I was yet with you, wow. yeah. that all things must be fulfilled. All things must be fulfilled. Read. Which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Yeah. Then opened he their understanding, mm. that they might understand the scripture. Now, that should be our prayer. When we read and study the word of God, we should pray, Lord, open uh, my understanding. That I might understand the scripture. Amen. Jesus is the literal fulfillment of the scripture, which means that he gives the proper interpretation of the word of God. Amen. You can ask him. Read. Yeah. And said unto them, Thus it is written. Thus it is written. And thus it removed Christ to suffer. And what does that word remove mean? Necessary. Necessary. Amen. Unavoidable. Read. And to rise from the dead the third day. Uh huh. Read. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in this name. Now, that's our God. Mm -hmm. That's our God. The matter, we all are called to ministry. Amen? All are called to ministry. You may not come here on the pulpit, but you're called to ministry. Amen? You ought to proclaim, that's what preaching means, to proclaim, amen, that he is risen. Hallelujah. All right? And you, that you, repentance you proclaim, and repent. This word repentance means to turn. What does it, what is it, what is it, what is it, what does it mean? In death, repentance. When you're asking a person to repent, what are you really asking them to do? Change. Turn from their wicked ways, come back to God, to change their mind, to change the way they think. Uh, to turn, turn, Change the way you think. Uh, and you can do that without tears. Without crying. Amen. Changing the way you think. That's what repentance means. I'm going to say something deep here. You can, you can feel sorry for what you've done. Think that you've repented, but if you keep on doing it, you have to repent. Come on, it's his power. That's it, you didn't forsake him. Right. You turn from it. Change. You didn't change the way you think about it. You didn't see it as exceedingly sinful. You didn't see it as offensive to God. <coughs> hmm? Until people see it that way, they continue in. Amen. Yes. People who smoke.
no sickness, no day it causes cancer. But they don't turn from it because they don't change the way they think about it. Right. Repent. The scripture says it's the goodness of God that leadeth you to repentance. Yes. When God leads you to repentance, whatever that issue with it, you're going to plant it in good ground. And it's going to bring forth. But if, if, if you just feel sorry or whatever, you're going to, that's the other soil that you, you'll be in. And the reason why I say that, the reason why I say that is this. I was thinking about something even in my own life. I didn't feel about sin. I wanted to stop doing it. And, and I'm, once again, I'm going to talk about sin. And I said to myself, well, Lord, I don't know. Of 
what? Okay, you know, that's correct. But when you don't honor God's word, you look to seek to, to serve your flesh. We want to be great in God. Am I right? Yeah. The Bible says, He has shown us, He has shown the only way uh, what, what the Lord requires. Right. Amen? When, when the Lord shows us what we require, right? And we're not giving him that. We got to repent. Yeah. Change our, our, our heart, our thoughts concerning it. Amen. Huh? And give God what he desires. That's it. That's it. My Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's not change my heart. But uh, a lot of us get stuck in the same rut year after year. Me. Uh, why, why, why hold on to something that, that, that you know is bad? And you know it's going to fail you. That's it. Change what you think. Get that. Thank God and praise God for you all being.